All right, growing bacteria in the lab. So uh, in the last video, I talked about the growth curve and um, like the mechanism of how bacterial growth. This time I wanna talk about uh, bacterial growth media and what we grow bacteria on in the lab. So basically, if you are growing bacteria in the lab, um, you need a growth media. Now, these days, we usually think of the term media as meaning, like, you know, TV, or news, or social media, or something like that, um, that it has something to do with the internet. Um, but that's actually a, a, a relatively new understanding of the term. Uh, the term media used to mean, basically, a thing that allows something else to happen. So the, the newspapers, which were a thing that used to exist, uh, were the news media. They were the thing that allowed news to happen, to, to go from place to place. The television media, um, you know, television was the media that allowed, um, you know, visual communication to happen. Uh, social media is the, the media that allows social communication to happen. Now, growth media is the media that allows growth to happen. So uh, there are several different types of growth media. Uh, it can be liquid or it can be solid. Very occasionally it can be semi-solid. Uh, liquid media is typically called a broth. Um, usually it's just like a nutritious soupy type thing. There are lots of different recipes for liquid growth media and lots of different types of liquid growth media that can have different um, functions. And uh, you will talk about some of these in lab. But... Uh, uh, for our purposes, for right now, um, liquid media is usually going to grow the largest number of bacteria the fastest because um, it's going to uh, give the bacteria maximal uh, uh, access to the nutrients and maximum space in which to live. Generally speaking, growth along uh, in liquid media follows the growth curve. Solid media, also called an agar, because agar is the substance that's added to make it solid, um, doesn't grow bacteria as fast, but what it does do is allow for the isolation of individual, what are called clonal colonies. So like, if you've got a tube, and you put a bacteria in it, and then you grow that, or let's say you put a bunch of bacteria in it, right? And then you let it grow. You're going to get lots and lots of bacteria out. But like if you then go in and, and take some of this stuff out, you don't know. Like you might grab a few million bacterial cells. You don't know if they all came from the same original cell that you put in there. There might be a mixture of different species or different strains uh, depending upon the media that was put in. And on the other hand, if you have, say, a solid media, an auger, and you put a bunch of bacteria on here uh, and you spread them out, then these bacteria are going to land at different places on the plate. Since they can't really move around very much, um, each individual cell will grow a colony around it. And you know that all of the cells in that colony came from that original cell that landed on that plate. So we refer to these as being clonal because they're all clones of each other. This is very important in doing experiments because you want to minimize the variables that you're not testing in an experiment. If you're doing some test on bacteria, 
Um, you want all the bacteria to be genetically identical unless you have intentionally put a genetic variation in there. Um, because when you see a difference, you want to know that that difference is because you changed some condition or something like that, uh, rather than just, you know, like some bacteria are different than others. Uh, a clonal culture is a pure culture. Uh, technically, a pure culture is one in which all of the bacteria in it are um, of the same species and subspecies. Um, so clonal cultures are by definition pure. Um, in order to get pure cultures uh, in the lab, which is what you usually want to work with, you use what's called aseptic technique. Uh, and this means, well, aseptic technique is basically the art of not destroying your sample by contaminating it with the wrong microbes. It's the art of protecting your sample from you and from the rest of the lab, because there are microbes everywhere. And if you get a couple of, like if you let some dust land on your plate, whatever microbes that dust was carrying will quite happily grow, and then your culture is not pure anymore. Um, so basic rules of aseptic technique, you know, always wear gloves, lab coat, hairnet if you have long hair. Um, minimize the amount of time that your media is exposed to air. The commonest way for contamination to get in is through dust. Um, so you want to keep your sample isolated from the air as much as possible. Um, when you are working with a glass vessel, particularly like a tube or something like that, um, you want to flame the lip of the vessel uh, to heat it up. And this does a couple of things. One, it kills any microbes that are on the surface there, but also when you heat up the lip of the vessel, it uh, heats up the air and hot air expands. So it creates a slight outdraft um, that will encourage dust to kind of like not fall in there because there's a bit of a draft coming out of it that will push any dust particles away. You want to make sure that you sterilize all your tools before and after use. Wash and disinfect all surfaces before and after use. And you want to work in a biosafety cabinet if possible. Um, if you really want to keep things pure. Uh, now, assuming that you're using all aseptic techniques, so you're preventing contamination, let's say you're starting with a uh, uh, with a uh, uh, um, let's say that you're starting with a mixed culture. Um, so you've got uh, multiple different types of bacteria all in the same sample. Maybe it's from an environmental sample or something like that. You want to isolate clonal cultures from it. How do you do so? Uh, so the, the method is uh, what's called a streak plate method or streaking for singles, which is not quite as fun as it sounds. Um, the, basically, what this is a, a method of doing is taking a bunch of liquid or solid culture, and then systematically diluting it until you get single colonies. And you know that those single colonies are clone. So the general way that you do this, you, uh, let's go here. Say that that's your plate. I usually put, uh, divide it into four quadrants just by like using a marker on the back of it. Uh, then you're going to take a loop, which is just a wire that's been made into a loop and you sterilize it using heat. You dip your loop into culture, um, which could be either liquid or solid. Then you take your loop and you streak it along one quadrant of the plate. So you would, I'm going to do this in uh, green here. So 
streak it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth there. All right? Uh, and since you just got like a bunch of bacteria, there's probably gonna be tons of bacteria on that sample that you just streaked. Um, it, it was gonna grow what's called a lawn, which is where like all the bacteria grows right next to all the other bacteria and you can't have to sell, tell independent, independent colonies. So the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, and you take your loop and you sterilize it again to kill off any bacteria on there. You let it cool down. You don't go back and get another sample. What you're gonna do is now take your sterile loop and drag it across the first quadrant that you streaked a couple of times and then streak it throughout the next quadrant. Um, and so I'm gonna do this in blue. So you would uh, go start here and like I usually say drag it across once all the way back drag it across a second time and then streak throughout that quadrant um, now you will when you pass your loop over any of the bacteria that was there you're gonna pick some of it up but if there were like billions of cells in the first quadrant you probably only drew, dragged like millions of cells into the second. Now you sterilize your loop and you're gonna do this again. Drag through quadrant two, back through and then squiggle, sterilize your loop and then do it again, back through quadrant three, and um, there's a there's a bunch of different methods to do this. I like using the four quadrant method. Some people just kind of wing it like this: and streak here, and streak here, and then across here, um, and then maybe from here down to there. Uh, the idea is that like each time um, when you streak, you're only picking up a small fraction of the cells there. And eventually, somewhere usually in quadrant three or four, um, you've only picked up a few cells and just like individual cells drop off. And those individual cells grow individual columns. So you want somewhere on this plate, you want to have individual colonies. And you can now take from those individual colonies, and that is clonal. So that's how you get clonal um, pure cultures. Um, regardless of... Uh, so there are, um, there are many, many different types of media that are available. Um, different media can have different properties. Uh, some media is what we call general purpose media, which means it just grows most things. Most things will grow on it. Some media is what we call minimal media, meaning that uh, it only contains sugar and some salts. And so in order to grow on it, the bacteria has to be able to make all of its own components. It has to be able to take that sugar and turn it into, uh, you know, uh, amino acids and lipids and nucleic acids and all of the other things that you need to make a cell. So um, if it can do that, then it can grow on minimal media. Some bacteria can do this. Some bacteria cannot. Um, there are some bacteria that require additional growth factors. Uh, and these are like nutrients, 
uh, above the normal standard nutrients that a bacteria might need. So for instance, a bacteria might need iron and that's not something that's in normal general purpose growth media, so it requires an enriched media in order to grow. Um, that's a media that contains these extra additional growth factors. Uh, two more categories, uh, which are both functional, which help to tell you something about the bacteria that you're growing, are selective and differential media. Selective media only allow some species to grow. So for instance, uh, usually it's gonna be based off of some biochemical or genetic characteristic. So suppose that some bacteria are resistant to the antibiotic uh, penicillin and most bacteria aren't. If you have some growth media that has penicillin in it, then only bacteria that are resistant to penicillin will grow. That is a selective media. Uh, you are selecting for penicillin resistant bacteria. And in order to, the only things you're going to see growing there are the stuff that have that quality. Uh, similarly, uh, McConkie auger um, contains uh, crystal violet in it, which prevents the growth of gram positive organisms. So only gram-negative organisms will grow on McConkie auger. So that is a selective media. Differential media means that more than one type of thing can grow, but some quality of them allows you to tell the difference. For instance, this is blood, sheep's blood auger down here. Some bacteria possess a particular toxin that allows them to lyse red blood cells and feed on the contents. Uh, and if you lyse the red blood cells, then the media turns clear. This is called beta hemolysis. Other bacteria don't lyse the blood cells, but they do release a chemical that discolors the iron in them turning it sort of a weird greenish color, which you can see right here. That is called alpha hemolysis. Uh, and also some bacteria don't do anything to the blood at all. That's no hemolysis or gamma hemolysis. So this media, blood auger, is differential. All three types of bacteria grow on it, but you can tell the difference between them based on their hemolysis characteristics. You can look at it and say, ah, oh, this bacteria is beta hemolytic, this bacteria is alpha hemolytic, this bacteria is gamma hemolytic. So a property of the media allows you to tell the difference. Um, media can be both selective and differential. Uh, for instance, McConkie auger, which I mentioned before, uh, contains crystal violet, which uh, prevents the growth of gram positives. So it is a selective media. It is selective for gram negatives. Gram negatives are permitted to grow. It also, um, uh, the, the crystal violet will uh, precipitate out of solution in the presence of acid. So... Uh, if the bacteria can ferment lactose into lactic acid, then the crystal violet will precipitate and turn the uh, bacteria pink. Whereas non-lactic acid fermenters will, uh, will not change color. They'll just look like a normal color. So here you can see this is... Um, I don't think that this is McConkie auger, but this is something similar. Uh, and you can see some of these colonies here have not changed colors, but others of them have. So McConkie auger is also a differential media. It allows you to tell the difference between bacteria based on fermentation. Some examples, this is not an exhaustive list, but just to give you some examples of bacteria or uh, of growth media, 
Uh, blood auger, which I mentioned, is enriched media, or what's called complex media as well, um, meaning it contains some growth factors, uh, specifically blood. There's lots of growth factors in blood, in, 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 uh, iron in addition to others. Um, so it will grow uh, what we call fastidious bacteria. Um, it also is differential because uh, you can differentiate based off of hemolysis. A chocolate auger is a complex medium that actually contains pre-liced red blood cells. You add the red blood cells while the media is still very hot and the blood cells all pop and spill their contents out. Um, this makes them available to everything, not just things that are uh, capable of lysing red blood cells. And so it is uh, capable, it's an enriched media capable of growing uh, organisms that require these growth factors. Uh, McConkie auger, I mentioned, is both selective and differential. Uh, it is uh, uh, selective based off of inhibiting uh, gram-positive organisms, uh, and it's differential based off of uh, a pH-induced color change for lactic acid fermenters. Nutrient auger is just like a normal... Auger. It's a general purpose growth media. Uh, Thayer Martin auger is a uh, enriched media uh, used to grow Neisseria, which is a type of bacteria that is known to have lots of growth factor requirements. Uh, and it's also selective because it inhibits, it has antibiotics that inhibit most organisms that are not Neisseria. So it allows Neisseria to grow, and it inhibits non-Neisseria from growing. Um, glucose salt is a minimal media, so that's only going to allow bacteria that can um, uh, that can make all of their own components to grow on it. Uh, it's used to study nutritional requirements of bacteria. It's not considered selective or differential. Uh, there are many other different types of media that you guys will be using in lab uh, and that you will study in there.